In this presentation, we will fill out the quarterly 941 forms for payroll taxes. We will do so using our information from the payroll register in Excel. Note we have information so far for the month of August and September. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Our data starting in August, therefore, we don't have any first or second quarters. We're in essence starting in the third quarter here. So we have these two months of data, and then the fourth quarter, October, November, December, we don't have yet. Note when we talk about quarters, sometimes it's easy to, sometimes it's, we can think that there's four months in a quarter because a quarter, because it's a quarter, but just remember that uh, quarter is going to be the 12 months divided by four, which is three months. So there's three months in each quarter. And our uh, quarter here, of course, is only two months because we started in the middle of the third quarter. So what we're going to do is we're going to sum up this data and we're going to use this data in order to fill out the form 941. To do that, we're going to have to add this up. So I'm going to add up the two quarters. I'm going to do that all the way at the bottom down here of our payroll register. We have quarter three and then we have the year to date totals. So I'm going to, I'm going to put uh, both of those, I'm going to fill both of those sections out. So in uh, F39, we're just going to say equals. I'm going to scroll all the way up top to the total in our first data, which is in F9. And then just say plus, and then I'm gonna scroll down just a bit and pick up the total in the next set of data, which is September in uh, F16. And that's it, that's all we have for the first quarter, and then enter. So there we have that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the yearly totals down here. Uh, and that'll mean that as when we work, use the worksheet in the future, the totals will populate just for us automatically. Uh, these probably shouldn't be green here. I'm going to ungreen these. I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to highlight these. It's probably not green on your sheet right now. Right click, but I'll show you what I'm doing and then paint and make it blue. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing for the yearly totals. And it'll match right now, but as we move forward, then it'll differ. So, and once we do that, then I'm just going to copy these formulas over to all of our total datas and it'll populate for us automatically. So in cell F41, we're going to say equals and scroll all the way to the top. And we're going to point to the F9 and then plus scroll down just a bit, point to uh, F16 plus and note the formula is up here. We can see the formula in the formula bar up top. And then we're gonna scroll down, even though there's zeros in October, I'm still gonna pick it up, pick up that number plus, and then here's the totals in the formula bar. Then we're gonna pick up this zero in F30 uh, plus, and then we're gonna scroll down just a bit and we're gonna pick up the zero in F37 and enter. So there's our information. Now we're just going to copy that information and paste it over into our totals on the right. And it should uh, just move over the relative formulas. So I'm going to highlight these cells, right click and copy. And then we'll just populate. I'm just going to highlight all of these cells or select all of these cells, right click and paste the first one. And it shouldn't matter here or the formulas, but uh, they're all dollar amounts, so it should be the same. So there we have that. Now we're using, uh, well, it doesn't matter which one we're using. They're both showing the same numbers right now because we only have three quarters. But as we populate the worksheet from here, it will then populate um, the rest of the data. Now we're going to take this data and see what we can fill out here on the 941. So the 941, we're gonna have the EIN number first. That's gonna be the employer identification number. No matter what type of entity we are, sole proprietor, partnership, corporation, we typically will need, well, we will need an EIN number to fill out the payroll. 
and uh, that's going to be separate than our, our other um, identification number for the Internal Revenue Service. So we've got the name, the address. We're not going to concentrate on that here. What we do want to make sure we do is check off that we are in the proper quarter, the third quarter, July, August, September. Note, we only have data for August and September because uh, we started operations within October. Okay, so then we're going to go down and start filling out our form down here. Line one says number of employees who receive wages, tips, or other compensation for the uh, pay period, including March, June, uh, in, in the quarters here. So we're going to pick up the number. We had four employees. So we're going to say four. Okay, then the next one says wages, tips, and other compensation. Now, the wages, tips, and compensation here has to do with the federal income tax wages, tips, and compensation, which will differ from what we will have down here in terms of wages and tips and whatnot for Social Security and Medicare. So those are the three taxes that we will be reporting here. These are the federal uh, taxes, the payroll taxes, including FIT, federal income tax, for the employee. Remember, this is the employee's withholding, not our taxes as a corporation that we'll report at the end of the year or as a business tax. This is the payroll tax. And then we'll have the Social Security and Medicare, both the employee and employer portions. So here we're looking for uh, line two, what the wages are uh, for the FIT, federal income tax. And that should match if we add up the, t the 941s uh, to the end of the year, what will be recorded if we sum up all the W-2s, meaning on the W-3. Uh, it'll match the total wages for uh, federal income tax there. So we're going to go back to our data then. So from our data, we're going to pick up the total earnings for the quarter, and we're going to reduce it by those things that are going to be reduced from total earnings, which when we calculate the taxes, and those will include the uh, retirement plan, so the 401k in this case, and uh, it would include the group insurance if the group insurance was a section uh, 125 cafeteria plan. We're going to say this one is not here. So we're just going to reduce the net pay. And note that this should kind of match the, the type of calculations we had with the withholdings when we withheld on the federal income tax. Meaning when we looked at each individual payment and tried to find the FIT tax, we should have taken the payment minus the 401k plan and then looked that information up to tie out to the tables. So in essence, we're looking for that same kind of uh, total number for total wages uh, regarding federal income tax. So if we pull the calculator out here, we're looking for this 9697.3.5 minus this 5548.4. That'll give us the 91, 425 and 10 cents. So we'll go back to our form 941, back to the 941, and we're going to put then the 91 comma 425 tab to be on this other side because they put the decimal in for us and 10 cents. So then we got the federal income tax withheld. Now note we can't calculate this again. We can't use this total number and calculate the federal income tax withheld because it's not a flat tax. It's too complicated to do so. All we can do is tell the IRS, hey, this is the what the wage base that we that we used but all of our employees have a different number of exemptions and a different uh, set of circumstances. And therefore we cannot just use that number in order to generate the FIT. So this number, although useful to the IRS, doesn't really indicate anything much at all with regard to what the actual federal income tax withholding could be. All we know is what we actually withheld. So if we go back to our data here, we're gonna say that uh, the actual withholdings for the federal income tax is the FIT number, this $17,003.26. So we're gonna use that number. We're gonna go back to our form and we're gonna put in that 17,003 tab and 26 cents. Now we're at the social security. So we got social security wages. So we're gonna go back to our table. We're gonna pick up the social security wages now in the third quarter, they're the same as total earnings. And that's because one, nobody's hit the cap, 128,400. Uh, in the next quarter, it will because we have one employee who is a high earner. And um, note that it could also be different if there was something that could be deducted from the wage base for OASDI 
uh, and Medicare. It could be different from the total and that would include a cafeteria plan. So remember this isn't a, a cafeteria plan, but if it were, then that would be another instance in which the OASDI and the Medicare would differ from the total earnings. So we're gonna pick up this number. So we're gonna go back to our form here. And just note before we do that, I'm gonna pick up this number and we already calculated the OASDI here and we calculated it here and note the rate 6.2 6.2 when we go back uh we'll we'll note the difference here it could be a little confusing so we're going to go back and put this uh, data in we're going to say the amount is 96 comma 973 tab and 50 cents and note the rate here it says then the multiply times 0.124 you might okay we'll do that but what is that where does that number come from 0.12 i haven't seen that number before and that number, of course, is the 0.062, 6.2% we've been using times two, meaning the employer and employee portion. So we're calculating the employer and employee portion at the same time, in other words. So we're going to take that uh, 0.0, I mean 0.124 times the 96973.5, and we get 12,024.71 about. So we're going to put that here, 12 comma. 024 uh, tab 71 about okay and you might say well i don't see that number there well of course and and you're probably thinking at this point that uh, that's the that's twice what it should be so here's the 6.2 and the 6.2 and then the amount then we have the employee portion i'm holding down control and then highlighting the employer portion giving us the total portion of 12 2471. So that's where that number comes from. It's a little bit confusing to, to go back and forth on that. Now we don't have any tips, thankfully. <laughs> so we're going to go to the Medicare wages. So Medicare wages, uh, we're going to do the same type of thing. Here's the Medicare wages. We're just going to pull from the OASDI. It'll remain the same unless, of course, once again, we had this cafeteria plan uh, was something that could be deducted from it. There's no cap as there is for the Social Security. Therefore, we're just going to use the total earnings here. So we're going to go back to our form. We're going to fill out that number with the total earnings is the same, 96. It'll differ once we get to the, to the last quarter here because someone will hit the cap on this one, but not this one. Notice it is different than this number, which is total wages, uh, because this one is reduced by the 401k or the retirement plan. Okay, so once again, we're going to multiply times the uh, 0.029, a number you may not recognize, and but that number is the 0.0145, the one we probably have used way too much if you've gone through this whole problem, times 2, and then you got uh, 0.029. So that's where that comes from. It's the employer and employee portion of the rate times the 96973.5 gives us 281223. So we'll put that here, two comma uh, eight two one tab twenty three. Now, once again, where does that number come from on our worksheet? Going back to the worksheet here, it comes from the HI here. There's the employee portion and the HI here. I'm holding down Control and selecting the other one, and that's the uh, two eight one two twenty three. Okay, let's see what else we have on this exciting form. We are then not having tips, so we're just going to add these two up. This one, line 5E, says add columns 2 from line A, uh, 5A, 5B, 5C, and 5D. So we're just going to add these up. We're going to say 12024.71 plus 2812.23 gives us 14836.94. Total Social Security and Medicare or total FICA taxes. 14, comma... 836 tab 94 okay so then we have uh the next line says section notice to do uh, tax due on unreported tips we don't have any there so we're good leave that blank and then six says uh total tax before adjustments same number so uh actually we're gonna not the same number we're gonna add line three five e and uh 5F, meaning federal income tax plus the Social Security and Medicare that we've already added up over here. So let's pull the 
trusty calculator account. Once again, 17003.26 federal income tax plus the social security measure the FICA taxes 14836.94 and that gives us the total taxes at this time 31840 and 20 cents. So that's going to go uh, here. 31 comma 840 and 20 cents. Okay, so then the next one says that uh, quarter adjustments, if there's any rounding, we're gonna have to put some adjustment there. We could be off by pennies. So if we're off by less than a dollar, that's typically okay. We're just gonna say that's a rounding error and they're not gonna make us write a check for a dollar, which is nice. Uh, we do need to be pretty precise for payroll taxes as compared to uh, other taxes, even, in, even income taxes. We need to be pretty much down to the penny as close as possible. Uh, then the total taxes after adjustments is going to be the same, 31,840 and 20 cents. Small business payroll tax credit, we don't, we're not going to have anything there. We're going to say uh, total taxes after the credit, 31,840 and 20 cents, same number. Now, it's really important to, to wrap your mind around the fact that this is going to be the liability amount, and then we're going to compare it to the deposit amount. This form is not here to tell us uh, what to pay and then we write a check necessarily. This form should be an information form only, just like the 1040, except the 1040 doesn't come out to be exact. So your individual, our individual tax form 1040 at the end of the year, uh, we should in a perfect world already have made the payments and we're just telling the IRS, here's what we owe, here's the payments we already made. And in a perfect world, it would be zero and we wouldn't get a tax refund or payment. Now, because the income tax is so complicated, that's impossible. And we usually work it out so that we get a small refund back. But on the payroll taxes, because it is more precise, it is possible to be exact. And we should be exact down to the penny that we can round off. So note, we already made the payment and we already, um, we already have the payment. So this is the liability portion. Now we're gonna look up the deposit portion. And the story is, hey, IRS, this is what we owe based on the calculation. You can see that we prove it up top, how we get to this number. Now we're gonna show you that we have already paid it, hopefully, and uh, and so we don't owe you anything. Here, that's it's been done, it's been done properly. Here's the evidence of that. So we're gonna go back to our form and we're gonna look for the deposits now. So to do that, we're going to go to the GL. So if we scroll down to our journal entries, remember our journal entries had like a journal entry to record the expense for the salaries and wages, and then to record the payroll tax expense, and then we paid the payroll taxes with cash. So here's this last journal entry paying it off. So the payroll happened in um, August, and then we processed it it in September and we didn't make the payment until 15 day the 15th of uh, September so this payment then cash is paying for uh, the OASDI the HI the FUTA the SUTA the federal income tax that was incurred for August which we're paying in September and then we did the same for October uh, we're paying this cash for the federal income tax, the FICA, the, the FUTA, and the SUTA, and the federal and the federal income tax and the Medicare for um, September that we're paying it in October. So in other words, this payment in particular can be confusing because we might say, well, it happened in October and that's the last quarter. That's October, November, December. That's the last three months of the year. That's the last quarter of the, of the year. So where should this payment go? Well, we applied it to the liability which was incurred for the payroll period in September. So really this payment is, is applied to the liability that was incurred in September. So these are the two payments we're going to have here. Now we have to break this out a little bit more too because we're dealing only with uh, OASDI, HI, Social Security, Medicare, and FIT. We're not dealing with federal unemployment or state unemployment. And you might say, well, why aren't we dealing with federal unemployment? It's a federal tax. And that's what we're working with, the federal taxes. For some reason, the, the federal unemployment, we only do yearly on a 941, possibly because it's so much smaller. So, so the IRS is saying, hey, you don't have to report that on a quarterly basis. We'll only make you report that on a yearly basis because the amount is so much smaller typically 
uh, on these because the amounts are very significant. We want to see them on a quarterly basis. So in that case, what we need to do is pick up this number, this number, I'm holding down control, and this number. That's going to be our 1680.21 um, for our first payment. And then we made a payment for uh, the next month in the quarter of this, this, I'm holding down control, and this. So these highlighted areas add up to 31840.20. Uh, if we do that with a calculator, of course, we would just say it's this 6063.1 plus the 1417.98 plus, then I'm picking up this number, 8599.13 plus, and then we're picking up this number, 5961.61. Plus, and then this number 1394.28 plus and then the FIT this number 8404.13 and that should be that same 31840 and 20 cents so that's what we're going to use so if we go back to our form here uh, we calculated it to be 31840 tab 20 cents comes out exactly Note that these aren't the same number though. This number is our liability <laughs> and this number is the deposits we made. Okay, so that's basically it. Now, the, the next component we can have is uh, the monthly breakout. So we're gonna kind of pretend that we need to break this out uh, on, on a separate form just to show you the separate form that will basically support this number. So here's the schedule B for the 941. And this is gonna be supporting, once again, that, that deposit number. So we got the same uh, EIN number we need up top. We need to represent the third quarter that we're working in. And then it's gonna break out by month. There's gonna be three uh, months within the quarter. And we wanna have the payments that were applied. Now for us, it's only gonna be one payment for that month because uh, we're monthly payers or our payroll's monthly. But if we were to pay weekly, bi-weekly, or semi-monthly, then we would probably have more than one payment. So what we're gonna do is just break the same information out uh, by the actual payments. So in uh, the second month, we've already filled it out here, but if we go back to our data, we're in essence picking up this uh, number that we paid, and that's gonna be this plus this, I'm holding down, down tab, and the FIT. That comes out to $16,080.21. If we go back to here, uh, back to here, it's going to be $16,80 and 21 cents. And that's the total. So we only have the one payment, of course. And again, if we had, if we had uh, weekly pay periods, we'd have more than one payment in the month. And then if we go back over here, we're going to say that the, the second payment we made is going to be this plus this and this amount and also note of course that uh, when we actually wrote write this check we would probably have to write separate payments or make separate payments whether it be electronic or by check for uh, futa and suta so this journal entry is representing multiple checks that the cash went out the cash went out probably with multiple different checks here so in practice if we were looking up the actual checks that cleared then uh, we would find separate checks uh, and be breaking out at least Futa and Suta to form a separate check. So in any case, this adds up to $15,759.99. If we go back over here, uh, here's the $15,759.99. That's our only payment for the third month. So here it is over here. And if we add those two up, then we're going to say that the second month, 16080.21, Plus the 15759.99 adds up to the 31840 and 20 cents. So scrolling down, that's the 31840 and 20 cents. So that supports the number that we put on the deposit side. So in other words, we're telling the IRS, hey, you know, we deposited this much. If you want more detail, here's the actual deposits we made. Here's the month we made them in. You should be able to see that on your side. If you don't see it on your side, let us know and we can then go back through and match this stuff up because on our side this if this deposit has cleared the bank then we can be pretty clear that the that the irs has um deposited it and then the only question is well if they deposited it and they say that they don't have it then it may not be applied to the proper quarter meaning uh we may have put the wrong quarter up here and possibly they applied it to quarter four 
or something like that when we made the payment. And so then all we got to do is hopefully talk to him and say, hey, it's applied to the wrong quarter. Would you apply it to the proper quarter? And everything should work out. So that's a common type of uh, problem.